At least it take away, Kirsty. Thank you very much, Liz. So, hi everyone. Um, me again. Um, so, I'm Dr. Kirsty Ross. I'm the outreach officer. I'm wearing a different hat now. So, right now, my hat is as outreach officer for the. Bear with me. EPSRC MRC Centre for Doctoral Training in Optical Medical Imaging, also known as Optima, shared between the University of Edinburgh and the University of Strathclyde. <sighs> Optima for short. Um, so our CDT is a whole bunch of PhD students who are being trained to have a heart for science and a head for business. Um, it's a four-year PhD programme. They come from lots of different disciplines. You know, we've got chemists, engineers, biologists, physicists, we've got a vet and a physiotherapist even. And they're all taking the hard sciences and applying them to clinical problems using optical medical imaging. So what I'm going to share with you today is an example of one of our outreach activities that we'd normally do face to face. Unfortunately, at the moment we can't. So to make sure that as many people get the chance to have a go at this as humanly possible, I'm currently in the process of making up packs um, to send out to anyone who's shielding. You don't need any chemicals, you don't need any resources, I will send everything out to you so that you can have a go at this to yourself at home. Um, part of the reason for it is because the CDT is all based around light, um, blueprinting or cyanotype printing is one of the oldest forms of photography. It was originally used in the very first photographic book was actually used to create uh, cyanotype prints of seaweeds. So you might want to go and have a go at that. Um, but you can essentially use this for pretty much creating whatever collage you like. We'd love to see some of the pictures. Um, there's more details um, below and in the um, description of some parts for what hashtag to use. But for now, I'm going to turn off this camera, switch to my other one, going full blue Peter today, and I will show you how to do blueprinting. Okay. So. You need these two things. Um, these two things get mixed together and they create the blueprinting liquid. So you take your liquid, you pour it in, took a tail like this. Okay. You can then use paintbrush, you can use a little foam brush, entirely up to you what you want to use. And you simply dunk it into your liquid and you paint it onto your paper. Now, as you can see, this is not looking terribly blueprinty right now. That is absolutely fine. Do not panic. It is meant to look like this. So you just dab it on, just like that. I would recommend do this at night. Do this under, you know, regular lamp, uh, light bulbs, that sort of thing. Don't want to do it in the daytime, it won't work. <laughs> I normally do this about 10 o'clock at night. So you set that to one side to dry. And you can do the same sort of thing for fabrics. You just, if you want to create your bunting, shape like that. The important thing is to let it dry in between. So once you've done all that, you set them aside to dry. And then very blue petery. Set that also to one side. Here are some. Here are some I made earlier. <laughs> so. <coughs> So it ends up looking kind of like this. So to create your prints, you take your paper or your fabric and you take objects. These can be absolutely anything you find in the garden. I seem to have a rather nice little bookmark. Pop that on there. I have a rock. If you happen to have any random doilies or any sort of fabrics that have got holes in them, that's also fine. You stick that over the top as well. That's essentially it. I've managed to steal some of my kids, some of my kids' letters. Stick that on as well. If you want to put your name on it, make sure you know it's yours. The other thing you now need to do is, I know it's Scotland. You may not be in Scotland. You may be somewhere else in the UK. Find a sunny spot. So I did a few experiments this morning. And what I did was I took a piece of fabric and then I left it out for different lengths of time. So that was left out for 20 minutes. That was left out for 15, 10, 9, 8, 7. And what you can see is it gets darker the longer you leave it out. So at the moment, with the sun where it is at the moment, 10, 15, 20 minutes gives you a nice dark blue and works a lot better because as you can see, if you leave it out for less time, sun has less time to react with chemicals. So you're left with a different blue at the end of it. So about 10, 20 minutes at the moment is ideal. So you would take this outside, you'd find a nice sheltered spot and you just leave it in the sun. That's basically it. So 
the piece of style again. You then bring your pieces in. And this is my bucket of science, aka a tray of water. So I created a couple of pieces of so this is what they look like when they've been sitting out in the sun for a while. They kind of go a sort of a khaki sort of denim grey when they first come out. This has been sitting around now for a couple of hours, so it's gone slightly dark blue. You put it in water. That's it. So I'm going to do the, I love this bit. This is my favourite bit. It's the reveal. So when you pop it in the water, make sure you wear gloves. You can wear a pair of marigolds. And you just pop it in the water. And wherever there was a shadow, cast by your objects that will start to wash away and what you'll be left with is the lovely bright white of the paper underneath now this one looks kind of random kind of abstract kind of like it was actually a pile of pumpkin seeds <laughs> um, that my daughter's been saving so that's what it kind of looks like on paper you get a lovely dark blue bound to the paper that's prussian blue and then you get the white from the shadows so i'll bring that a bit closer to the look which is rather cool. <clears throat> Put that one side. I don't know what this is going to turn out like. This was a total experiment. So this was me using that sort of lacy doily thing. Let's see what happens. Proper science. Ooh, cool. Hope it works. <laughs> this is science, real science. I've got no idea if this is going to work. But what you can see. <clears throat> oh, it's working. Oh, that's so cool. Sorry, geeking out a wee bit here. So you just wash it and wash it in the water. These water, these chemicals, perfectly safe to go down the sink or down the toilet. Probably better down the toilet. And what you're left with, if you can see, try not to drip everywhere. Is you're left with amazing pieces like that. Can you see that? I hope you can see. That's come out brilliantly. Now, obviously, because the sun does move, or rather, technically speaking, the earth moves, it does mean that you will get shadows. So the closer your objects can be to the surface of the paper, the better, because otherwise they end up a little bit fuzzy. But if anyone's got any lace, do give it a go. And I think you should end up with things that look a wee bit like this. And with that, I think we'll return to Lewis in the studio.